you want me to do this, I'll be happy to. And then we'll uh, start the formal agenda. So uh, the, we're pleased to offer live simultaneous interpretation in Spanish, Haitian Creole, Cape Verdean, Portuguese, Cantonese, Mandarin, Viet Vietnamese, Somali, Arabic, and American Sign Language. I will introduce the individuals who will then introduce themselves to their respective constituents. Our uh, Mr. Mr. Contempasis, could we um, first take the roll? I was going to do that after I introduced everyone. Okay. Our Spanish interpreter is Randolph Dominguez. Is Randolph with us? Yes. There he is. Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Randolph Dominguez. I am going to be your Spanish interpreter for the day. Um, and now I will introduce myself to the Spanish speaking people on this call. Muy buenas tardes, damas y caballeros. Mi nombre es Randolph Dominguez. Voy a ser su intérprete simultáneo para, acces para acceder al sistema de interpretación simultánea. Van a ver un globo que se va a activar en la parte inferior de su pantalla. De ahí tienen que pulsar y buscar el idioma español para poder escuchar la interpretación de manera simultánea. También, si están utilizando un celular, deben de buscar los tres puntos en la esquina superior derecha de su pantalla y seleccionar también español. Para hacer esto, deben de tener el sistema más reciente de Zoom, la actualización más reciente de Zoom. Si no la tienen, por favor, vayan a www.zoom.us barra inclinada o diagonal update. Y ahí pueden bajar la actualización más reciente para que puedan tener acceso a el Zoom de esta noche. Muchas gracias. Thank you, sir. Our Haitian Creole interpreter is Sergio St. Hilaire. Hi. Hi, good evening. Good evening. My name is Sergio St. Hilaire, Haitian Creole interpreter. Et moi, je voulais dire bonjour à tout le monde qui a parlé de l'émission après-midi et que et tout le monde qui vient pour participer à la ou à vous contacter pour entrer la donne. Et moi, très content que tout le monde a suivi et puis nous sommes capables de un bon après-midi pour nous capables de gagner toutes les informations qu'on a besoin dans l'émission qu'on a fait aujourd'hui. Et si so, vous avez cliqué dans le côté où il y a un globe blanc pour entrer dans la conversation, si vous avez besoin de et puis nous même moi, même moi, la map traduit tout ça qu'on a besoin de pour pas hésiter. Nous sommes très contents que vous avez avec nous et moi, plutôt pour gagner une bonne écoute, une bonne participation. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, sir. No problem. Our Cape, our Cape Verdean interpreter is Lidiana Mendez. Good evening. Hi, good evening. My name is Lidiana Mendez and I'll be a Cape Verdean Creole interpreter. Botardi, and you know me and Liliana Mendes and the Serbian Tab to the Cap Verde Criolo. And Tom Pauperi assess a to do cause again to follow the Criolo Pain Tab to test a non global key with a click key with a way be to recall key in the fall or a ski, care for young Lija Commerce. And Tom Sibutini Alcum in for Sibutin Alcum Preguntas, put a way Lana Pagina Labuta for good preguntas to Kelki Butin. Obrigado. Thank you. Our Portuguese interpreter is Christiane Lettner. Oi, boa tarde. Meu nome é Cristiane, eu sou intérprete de português brasileiro. Se você precisa de interpretação para essa reunião, você vai poder encontrar o canal em português no Globo, na parte inferior da sua tela. Você pode clicar e escolher português para acompanhar essa reunião em português brasileiro para estar tá fazendo a interpretação simultânea. Obrigada. Thank you. A Mandarin interpreter is Tina Wang. 
啊，大家好，我是今天的普通话的翻译。一会儿呢，等那个地球仪上来的时候呢，请你选择 Mandarin， 就是我的普通话的频道。啊，我们也有广东话的翻译，一会儿他也会介绍。啊，然后您呢，好像有一个人是。呃，参加要参加今天晚的公众评论。那你如果听到我的话，到时候呢，请你呃可以讲普通话，我来给您翻译。那我翻译的时候呢，你可能听不到我，没关系，您就慢慢讲，然后我会我会坐下来记录，到时候我会翻译给他们听。呃，那个时候是交传，是你讲一句，我再讲一句。那么一会儿我们开始的进行这个会议的时候是同传，是他们讲的同时，您会。听到我好，一会儿在这个 Mandarin 普通话的频道见，谢谢 ，Thank you, Thank you. Our Vietnamese interpreter is Duyen Pru.、Uh, good afternoon, my name is Duyen,、uh, Vietnamese interpreter for tonight meeting.、Uh, xin chào các anh chị, các gia đình、uh, có cần thông dịch Việt Nam liên tục thì xin hãy bấm vào quả cầu ở phía dưới màn hình và chọn ngôn ngữ tiếng Việt thì tôi sẽ cung cấp và thông dịch cho các anh chị. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, our Somali interpreter is Fatima Hassan. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Fatima Hassan. I'm here to interpret today. Hello, salam alaikum. Well, hand in the hand. So the weather got up to hand. How about in a day show? Of the Ubahan in low Turjuma. We have low Turjuma. Yeah, look at this. Oh, yo, oh, a Somali. I don't care for you. I care for the who's over my television. Oh, I'm a telephone commercial. I'm a distemper. In a tabletin and Somali, I care for the who's a mesh. The who's a kid. No, I have to do my. Aniga. Salam alaikum. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our Arabic interpreter is Ahmed Al Rubaye. Hi everyone. My name is Ahmed Al Rubaye. I will be the Arabic interpreter today. مرحبا جميعا أنا اسمي أحمد الربيعي أنا سأكون مترجم إلى اللغة العربية لهذا اليوم بإمكانكم الاستماع إلى اللغة العربية بالذهاب إلى أسفل الشاشة ستشاهدون علامة الكرة الأرضية اضغط على هذه العلامة ستخرج لك الخيارات بالنسبة للغات اضغط على اختيار اللغة العربية وستمكن من الاستماع إلى الترجمة باللغة العربية في حالة وجود لديك أي سؤال أو يتطلب منك الإجابة يجب أن تقوم بالتحول مرة ثانية إلى اللغة الإنجليزية لنتمكن ليتمكن المشاركين من الاستماع إلى سؤالك وسأكون سعيدا بترجمة هذا السؤال وبعدها ترجع مرة ثانية إلى اللغة العربية للاستماع إلى ترجمتي شكرا جزيلا لكم Thank you so much Thank you sir And our Cantonese interpreter is Maple Zhu. Hi, thank you. My name is Maple. 大家好，我系今晚大家嘅广东话翻译。咁一间我会为大家提供同步嘅传译。咁一间大家会见到个图像下边诶，屏幕下方咧有一个地球仪嘅标志啦。咁请你点击个地球仪咧，入边咧个语言大家注意啦，要揾 Chinese。OK， 因為今晚係冇誒個打字咧，係打唔出廣東話呢一個選擇，所以大家要揾 Chinese。咁點入去之後咧，就可以聽到我同步嘅廣東話翻譯。咁如果你睇唔到呢個標誌或者用手機上嘅話咧，你要揾屏幕下方嘅三個點，然後寫住更多呢個功能。點入去之後咧，揾語言服務，亦都係揾 Chinese 呢一個頻道。如果你呢連呢個都揾唔到咧，你可能要下載最新版本嘅 Zoom 嘅軟件，就係、是、去 Zoom 點。com， 然后去斜杠 up 啊 download， 咁样就去下载。Okay， thank you。Thank you。And last but by no means least， Aaron， our ASL interpreter。Thank you。I think， uh， Lena， that covers the waterfront， correct？ Yes， that's correct。Thank you， and thank you for。Uh, you and your colleagues for providing us with the interpreters that we have this evening.、Uh, a hearty welcome to all of you.、Uh, if you would, Lena, could you please call the roll? Thank you very much. I will.、Um, Miss Mr. Acevedo. Presente.、Uh, Miss Aguirre. Presente. 
Mr. Gregor. Present. Presente. Dr. Freeman Wisdom. Present. Ms. Grasa. Present. Ms. Loom. Present. Uh, Ms. Nagasawa. She's in the webinar. If she can get comments into the attendee room. Yes, she's here. I'm. I'm going to promote her to panelists. So there she is. Um, Ms. Garrett. Here. Thank you. Ms. Tang. Present. Ms. Wait. Present. Ms. Sullivan. Present. And Mr. Compton Passes. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we move on to the approval of the minutes, I think all of you have received the minutes. And as you can see from having read them, uh, we all on the meeting in February introduced ourselves. For those of you that were not here, would you just simply tell us in 20 words or less who you are, who you represent, and we'll go from there. Let's begin with uh, Tanya Freeman Wisdom. I knew I was gonna be first, some, some reason. Uh, I am Tanya Freeman Wisdom. I'm the proud uh, head of school at the John D. O'Brien School of Mathematics and Science. Thank you. Samuel? Good evening. <clears throat> I'm uh, Sam Acevedo. I'm the executive director of the Boston Higher Education Resource Center. I have the honor of serving as one of the co-chairs of the Boston School Committee's Opportunity uh, Task Force, uh, Opportunity Gaps Task Force. Um, and I'm also on staff at the Congregación Leon de Judá. Thank you. Acacia? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Acacia Aguirre. My daughter attends the O'Brien School. She's in eighth grade. Uh, I am also a Boston resident for almost 30 years now, and I am a BPS teacher. And Tamara Wait, please. Hi, my name is Tamara, and I am the parent mom of two BPS um, students and I also work for the city of Boston in the health benefits office. Thank you and welcome to all of you. Uh, you. I would like to now see if we could have a motion to approve the minutes of the February 23rd meeting. You can entertain a motion. I move. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The minutes are approved. Uh, I would like to take a couple of minutes before uh, we move on to the meeting schedule and sort of put Tanisha on the spot a little bit in a minute, but primarily to let us know that, let you know that I was informed by the district that one of our student representatives is no longer on the task force. Having resigned, as I understand it, from BSAC, uh, it now behooves the district to find another representative who I am told will be joining us at the next meeting next week. Um, the other update may well be something that uh, most of you are familiar with, but as you well know from last meeting to this one, uh, we have had a complaint filed in federal district court. And I don't wanna to take too much time in today's meeting, but perhaps, uh, and I would ask Tanisha, since she did a terrific job last night, presenting the two sides here, that you at least bring us all up to date on, the on what took place at the first meeting and what is anticipated 
for the second, who the participants are, and we'll stop it at that. Whatever else you think is critical. Uh, so uh, thank you, Mr. Contempasis. Um, you know, not much to share in this forum, um, but certainly want to first and foremost um, make sure that our parents and our families, our students who are so anxiously awaiting um, a decision uh, with respect to this year's um, uh, admissions process and want to make sure that they all know that the process is still moving forward um, and that although we would typically have um, you know, families would typically receive notifications probably within the coming weeks, certainly before the end of March, about, um, about assignment opportunities, about invitations. Um, uh, those invitations uh, will not come before the middle of April. So if you don't hear something, um, don't get nervous. Um, it, the process is still moving, um, but uh, the district has um, graciously agreed um, to delay its um, invitation um, window by a few weeks. So that's first and foremost. Um, secondly, um, yes, there has been a federal lawsuit filed um, challenging the COVID-19 admissions process, which was the, the, the one year admissions process that was um, approved by the school committee in October. Um, that policy is being challenged in federal court. Um, there was a hearing last week. There'll be another hearing uh, next week um, on the matter, at, at which time we will all know um, uh, what, uh, what the determination is by the judge as to whether we're going to trial or, or not. Um, I certainly encourage folks to um, pay attention, if you're interested, to pay attention to the Federal District Court website um, because there is an opportunity for those who are interested to actually sit in on these hearings. Um, I, I, I must admit, I do, I, I do get a little excited about the weeds. So um, if you're like me and you wanna know the details, I encourage you to participate in that. Those are open to the public. Um, thirdly, and probably most important for this body to know is that our work continues. And so we have been charged by the school committee um, to be thoughtful um, as a task force about um, what um, really what our admissions process should look like for our exam schools. Um, you know, recognizing that it's been, gosh, I mean, Mr. Contempasis, it's been maybe a couple decades since we last revisited um, the, 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 the process. And so it's certainly time for us to, to look at it again um, and to see um, where um, on a, from a permanent standpoint, adjustments um, may be appropriate. So one, the process continues, don't get nervous. If your children, if your families don't receive their notice in a couple of weeks, that's intentional. They won't receive anything for until probably mid-April. Second, if you're interested in learning more about the, the lawsuit or even sitting in on some of the, um, the hearings, you can do that. It's public. Um, visit the U.S. District Court website, um, U.S. District Court of Massachusetts website. And third, for us as a task force, our work continues. Um, and um, I just look forward to, uh, to learning with this body um, and being able to present uh, a recommendation that um, that we as a city can all be can all stand behind. Thank you. Um, just one little addition, and that is that you can sign up. You must register, as Tanisha has mentioned, beforehand, in order to be granted access to the actual uh, deliberation that will occur next Tuesday. Uh, you can do that by looking up the US federal court uh, website 
And you can do it as early as I believe three days in advance, if that so interests you. Um, it is three days. So, so actually, you you the the registration will not open until uh, the thirteenth of, of of March. So that's right. All righty. Okay. Um, next okay, Sunday, um, just, go ahead. Oh. Uh, I just just wanted to pipe in, um, Madam Chairman, Mr. Chairman, that there were several, you know, and and uh, Ms. Sullivan, I think I would pre prefer to defer to you, but I think it's also important to note that there were several community amicus briefs that were filed, um, uh, and most and, and many of them, um, in fit, you know, supporting the position of the exam school working group and the decision of the Boston School Committee. Uh, they included uh, the Greater Boston Latino Network and the NAACP uh, and the ACLU and other uh, noted uh, organizations in the city um, that added um, amici uh, briefs to, um, to the, um, uh, the deliberation. So just, just a point of clarification, um, to my knowledge, there have been no Amici filed. Um, however, there have been certainly public statements made. Um, to your point, um, uh, uh, Pastor Acevedo, um, there have been uh, public statements made um, in support of, um, of the school committee policy, the temporary policy that the school committee um, adopted uh, last fall. But again, I want us to remain focused on our task that is in front of us. And that is, and we've got a very short window to, uh, to accomplish this audacious task. Um, and that is to present our um, school committee with a recommendation on a policy, a permanent policy for, um, for these admission, for admissions to these schools. Thank you both. Um... Just a uh, review of uh, what on the agenda is listed as the meeting schedule. I think everyone is aware of it. Doesn't hurt to, I think, just repeat it. We will be meeting weekly. These from five. Is it a task force? Força de tarafa. Ficou a estimar a Monk. For uh, the once weekly meeting will run until approximately the school vacation in April. The week after that, we will begin meeting twice a week. Our timeline, as Ms. Sullivan has mentioned, uh, is the end of May, we will probably uh, try to meet that deadline in time for the school committee to take up our recommendation or recommendations in their June meetings. In addition, we have scheduled one listening session of two hours duration this coming Saturday from 10 to 12. I believe the district has either completed or is in the process of notifying through their communications office as many folks as possible of the meeting occurrence. It is strictly a listening session. There will be a second one scheduled tentatively in May prior to the recommendations from this task force moving forward to the school committee. That date has not yet been determined, but again, it will be probably of two hours duration. I would so, encourage you. Mr. Contapasas, I just want to just one caveat. It's actually, so this Saturday, actually, our listening session is from 10, scheduled from 10 to 11. So it's just the one hour. Yes, thank you. 
If yeah. we run over, we'll run over, but it is scheduled officially 10 to 11. Um, anything else that I've left out? Our meeting next week begins what I hope will be a series of uh, speakers. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Most of whom <laughs> have had familiarity on some of the other districts that have implemented uh, assignment plans or policies, which I believe it is essential that we uh, look at, hear about, and whatever. The first one is scheduled for next Tuesday. And thanks to Ms. Sullivan and Mr. Krager, we have been able to ask Sean Corcoran, who is currently at the University of at Vanderbilt in Tennessee, to speak to us next week around particularly the Chicago model that we have talked about, the work group members have talked about, uh, but also to respond to concerns that you may all have regarding the effectiveness of the implementation, the problems they may have run into, and anything that really comes to mind regarding that particular process. In future meetings through uh, Monica Roberts's uh, office, as well as through Vice Chair O'Neill, because of his connections to the Council of Great City Schools, we are expecting to hear from other districts who have ex uh, successfully implemented uh, plans that might prove beneficial as we go about our work uh, in the future. Ms. Sullivan, Anything else to add? No, I do not have anything else to add, you know, but, you know, just to, you know, as we look at tonight's agenda, although we do have um, the listening session scheduled for Saturday, I just want to call out that we really wanted to begin this work hearing from community, right? And so really trying to be intentional about building that into this process at the outset. Um, you know, tonight we'll start that process. It will continue tomorrow. And then as Mr. Condon Paz has shared, we'll, you know, as a, as, as a task force, we'll be jumping into, into the work, um, looking at the other aspects of the work, looking at, you know, what's happening, um, other best, practice of best, best practices and models um, for us to explore. But tonight I'm really looking forward to hearing um, and listening. Um, so, you know, with that, you know, there's not going to be an exchange back and forth um, between the task force members and um, in the public, um, but we really are going to spend our time listening and, you know, to be able, we do have some folks who've signed up for, um, you know, for, um, for uh, uh, public comment for this listening session. Um, and I know that, you know, I'm sure there are others. We've got a, you know, we've got a pretty nice group of folks who've assembled. There may be others who, you know, haven't had a chance to get their names on a list, but to the extent we have um, time, I, I, I want to I wanna hear from, from folks. So that's what I'm looking forward to, uh, to this evening. Okay, I think we're ready to go into public comment. Let's go. And I'd turn it over to uh, Ms. Parvex to get the ball rolling, please. Thank, thank you very much. So we have eight speakers this evening that signed up uh, and they will have two minutes per person. Uh, those who require interpretation services would receive an additional two minutes. Please state your name, affiliation, what neighborhood you are from before you begin. And when I call your name, please raise your hand virtually on Zoom. And also please make sure you're signed into Zoom with the same name you use to sign up for public comment. That will allow us to, to identify you. Our first speaker this evening is Luis, Luis, Luis Liu 
So is Louis Liu here? Can you please raise your hand? There, just a second. Louis Liu, go ahead. You have to unmute yourself there. Welcome. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Louis Liu. I am a JQ US 6 creator. I am in ABC living at Dorchester. I come from a low income family. I have never been to any paid tutoring institution since I was young. My mom found a lot of free one-to-one -one tutoring sessions for me from the past year to now. My free tutoring resources are BLS's a Helping Elbow Tutoring, COVID ed Dossimus Training, Paraclete Community, and Boston Partners in Education. Since fourth grade, I always study hard every day to get into the exam schools. I was a JQES AWC student, so my eighth my fifth grade report card might not be very high, but I hope that the BPS could evaluate my fourth grade MCAS scores, my sixth grade report card, and my sixth grade NWEA map, ELA and math test scores. After BPS did an analysis about all my grades, you could, could reconsider my rank fairly. I really want to go to my dream school. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Rachel Meiselman. I don't see her in the attendees. Rachel Meiselman, if you're here, could you please raise your hand? No. So the next one is Al Alan Tian. Alan Tian. Alan Tian, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Hello, um, am I here? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, uh, for the task force, uh, I'm Alan Tian. I'm from Baxter Roxbury. Um, I, uh, I have a Fifth grader now this year, and that's going to be ne next year going to be sixth grader. So I, I'm mostly concerned. Uh, of course, I'm concerned this year, uh, the schools uh, exam school uh, process. But I'm more concerned for the next year because my 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 kids is going to be um going to this process next year. So for the future exam school invitation, this code should not be including the, into the any consideration. There are many flaws in the zip code allocation. There are even zip codes are not including in the plan, like some of the zip code, the Chestnut Hill, 02467, which is in the neighborhood around the West Roxbury. Belong to Boston, but they never uh, consider in the zip code, zip code plan. Boston kids in the zip code will not have opportunity to go to exam school. Any location uh, uh, exam school sees using zip code quota based on the number of school children, uh, it's a it's a resulting uh, resulting violation of constitution law. And uh, zip code the policy calls the students in the same classroom have who have a different tra treatment, even living in the same neighborhood in Boston, even students in Dorchester or Roxbury, but they will have, they won't have equal access to exam school seats just because on different zip code. One zip code is just from the other different side of the street. It's maybe on the same street. Two kids will have different treatment. Also JPA have big variance in different schools, especially private and public school grading philosophies. There's no way to evaluate the students Solely using the GPA, so I think last year uh, the, the 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 map test is recommended by uh, by our superintendent. I think that's the best way to go, and uh, in combine with the GPA, maybe that's. Uh, but I I definitely think in the next year we should still have the map test, and uh, along with the GPA. 
Thank you. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, uh, we see that Rachel Meisenman is here, is back. So I'll um, be... but, but Ms. Parvex, before we yes. get started, I'm going to ask if all of the task force members could put their um, their uh, computers on mute. Thank you. Rachel Meisenman, please unmute yourself. Hello? We can't hear you. Oh, there. Hello? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, first of all, I would like to um, thank everybody for this opportunity to express my views. Um, as I've shared in the past, I am uh, an alumna of one of the exam schools, um, an alumna of the Boston Public Schools. And as we all know, the Boston Public Schools is the oldest school system in the nation. We have right here in Boston, we have the Mather Elementary School, which is the oldest elementary school on the continent. We have Boston Latin School, which is the oldest uh, public school in the nation. Boston is routinely around the world looked at as an intellectual uh, mecca, academic mecca it is seen as a premier destination for higher education. So I think that people would normally naturally expect that all of our schools uh, are giving our children uh, an education that can only be referred to as exemplary, uh, but that's not the case. Uh, we have many hardworking teachers, many hardworking administrators, um, but it must be said that our feeder schools are suffering. Now, I think that we're all concerned about having a student body that is reflective of the city. Uh, we want people to have opportunities, um, but I would argue that in order to have opportunities, uh, we need to have students that are prepared. And I would say that we need to have our feeder schools, we need to invest more in them. In fact, according to a state audit uh, for March of last year, 2020, uh, it was found that of the nearly 52,000 students in the Boston Public Schools, one third of them were attending uh, schools in the uh, that were ranked in the bottom 10 in the Commonwealth. That's absolutely unacceptable. So what I would say is that we need to focus, if we want more inclusivity, we need to focus on our feeder schools. We need to make sure that whatever is wrong with them is remedied. Uh, and it, you know, fixed, and so that when our children are ready, should they choose, they will have the skill set. They will be prepared to take the exam schools. Uh, the idea is to pr uh, to preserve the rigor of the exam schools, but we also want to make sure that there's excellence and rigor throughout our educational system. I think that our youth deserve that. And I think that the reputation of Boston depends upon that. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to, to express my ideas and my views. And, and I do hope uh, that they're taken into consideration. Thank you very much. Next person is Tom Song. Tom Song, if you're here, please raise your hand. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I mean, first, thank you for giving me the opportunity to voice my um, concerns. Um, I, I, I guess at first, I think I cannot agree more the previous lady, what she said. Um, I, I think the, the more critical issue, I mean, is how to make all the feeder school better because I mean, that's a fact that more students 
If we need a task force, I think that's definitely deserve one more than this. I don't say this is not a problem, it is, but that is more critical. Um, on that note, I would think, just ask like, we think all the three exam schools is better, right? Otherwise we won't have even have this meeting. But I mean, I just want to ask what makes this three exam school better than other schools? Um, I would think exam is a part of the reason. I won't say it's all the reason, but I think it's part of the factor. Um, I go through my daughter with her exam. I don't, the exam for sure is not perfect, but I think the process makes her a better student. So make her focus, make her set up a goal at a young age, like fifth, sixth grade, set up a goal and to pursue it. But basically that's the case, like, they can play a half an hour video game, but if they want to pass the SE test, they need to spend half an hour memorize the vocabulary. So basically teach them discipline, set up a goal um, to pursue it. I think that's what do they learn, not the exam itself. I think the process makes them more academically prepared, make them a better student. So I guess when you consider the exam, I would urge the committee members to think about what makes the three exams go better place? And there's some downside of the exam, but there's also good side. So um, that's one point. Um, the second point, I think um, last July, the superintendent Casillas have a statement and said, I'm excited to part partner with NWEA and uh, appreciate their desire to work with the DPS on our shared goal of increasing the diversity of our exam schools. BPS has identified a fair assessment that is aligned to the Massachusetts state standard. Test students on materials they have learned in school and has been reviewed and valid for bios. Administrating this new entrance test is an important step forward in expanding access to the exam school to all students. So looks like we already spent a lot of effort and time um, to valid some exams. So I would give in the difficulty normal, normalize the grades from various school district, um, as well as the subjective nature of the grading process itself. So it would be, seems would be evident that exam could be used as a part of the process to provide objective um, since like we already kind of identify some exam has served the purpose. So yeah, I guess that's uh, my two point and uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity and uh, thank you for the community members to give the effort, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Next person, next speaker is Sarah Chi. Sarah Chi, if you're here, please raise your hand. Hmm. Otherwise, we go to the next one. Anthony Sweat. Anthony Sweat, if you're here, please raise your hand. I don't see anyone with that name. Um, Eric Shi. Eric Shi, if I see you here, I'm there. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Uh, first, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my opinions tonight. Uh, my family moved from Braintree to Boston uh, roughly five years ago. And at the time, we knew nothing about the school system in Boston, such as uh, exam schools, right? So we didn't consider where to live in terms of zip code at the time. But now I think for uh, other people who have to think about this uh, uh, zip code, you know, before uh, they moved to Boston. I think that's kind of crazy. Uh, a few minutes ago, I was reading an online article with, which is a letter from a graduate of Boston Latin School and a lifelong resident of Dorchester. The title of his letter is Exam Examination, Not Zip Code, should be the key factor in admin admissions for uh, BPS exam schools. I agree with him. For the future exam school invitations, zip codes should not be included into consideration. Uh, 
I go to another parent uh, who uh, just uh, shared his opinion. Zip code code will result in a racial uh, rebalancing, which violates the constitutional law, right? I don't think zip code policy will improve equity. Actually, it will negatively impact students from low income zip code as well. And it will divide uh, our students and our community in Boston. I don't want my kid to be asked some question like, uh, how did you get into this exam school? Which zip code are you, know, are you from? In the first day when they meet their classmates at the uh, exam school, right? And the second point I want to make is, we should not evaluate students solely using GPA because GPA has big variance in different schools, private versus public, AWC versus regular classes. That's all I want to share tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker has requested Mandarin interpretation. So to everyone who wants to hear the interpretation, you will need to move over to the English channel and our interpreter, um, our Mandarin interpreter will move over to the English channel in order to be able to interpret. Sure. Um, so next Eu vi, person você precisa estar no canal. is Emma Yang. Emma. Emma Yang, is there? Emma Yang, please speak. Hello. Hey, hello. You can speak Chinese. Hello. Hey, hello. Please speak. Can you hear me? Please speak. 请讲。你好，能听见我说话吗？能听到。请讲。你好。哎，请讲。So to our uh, Mandarin um, interpreter, can you ask her to move over to the English channel because she might not hear you? Hello. Yes, hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I need to translate. So where is our um, Mandarin interpreter? I'm here. I yes. am here. Do you hear her? Do you hear Emma Yang? Yes, I, I hear her, but somehow she can't hear me. You know, so, can you hear me? I can. I can. Oh, okay. Then you can speak. Oh, okay. Well, good. Thank you. Please speak. Okay, My name is Emma Yang. Good evening, everybody. I'm a Dorchester resident. Even to uh, uh, students with the same race, I have to say, because of the school or the uh, zip code where they live, uh, the, those factors will greatly impact the admission. I think the uh, race and zip code could be a, 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 a reference. Uh, I think you could refer to in your Boston admission system. But it could not be an absolute reason that you should rely on. Because to those uh, students who have the potential to be admitted to the exam schools, if you admitted them, uh, I, I'm not sure whether you are helping them. Oh, you are harming them. Uh, that would be a great uncertainty. Uh, I really hope BPI could be fair, uh, fairly treat those uh, students. Uh, and uh, really admit those best outstanding students. Uh, and be responsible to each and every student's life. 
，谢谢。One moment, I want. We're actually going to need to do, um, Miss Yang, um, apologies. We are going to need to do this again and make sure that we have clear instruction for the task force members about what we need to do because we want to make sure that we hear this testimony. So. Everyone needs to go in the bottom to the English and choose the English channel. 不好意思，他们要点击英文频道才能听到我们。Once in the English channel, you hear. 啊，您您没我，您您没有问题，您不用动。So everyone, hopefully, you see the 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 little globe at the bottom of your screen.、Um, on my screen, it's next to the raised hand, but it's the bottom panel. You should see a little globe. It says interpretation. We're clicking on that, and then we're clicking English. Is that correct, Miss、yes. Parvex? Yes, that's correct. Okay, Maple. I'm sorry. Do you mind doing this again? Maple, can you、yes. hear me? It's Tina who is translating Mandarin. Oh, sorry, sorry, Tina. Do you mind? Do you mind、oh, okay. doing this again? Uh, uh, yes, I will try my best. So basically, she's saying. And before,、uh, we, before we hear the testimony,、um, because I, I absolutely want to make sure that we get to hear the testimony,、um, Miss Tung, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm wondering what happens after Miss Yang is done. Do we go back to the interpretation tab and click off? Or do we stay in English? You can stay in English. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So basically,、uh, Emma is saying uh, 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 BPS has been mainly rely on the RIS and zip code to do the admission process. And、uh, in her opinion,、uh, so, I'm sorry.、Okay. Uh, um, I actually I want the just for the for the record to be clear, given that this is,、um, and I want to be fair.、Um, could we get a direct translation? I'm going to ask. Could you, Miss Miss Yang? Um, if you could please, again, my apologies. Could you please repeat your testimony so that we can get a direct interpretation? Okay. Ah,、uh, 不好意思 ，I'm I'm 那个他们我再做一遍是吗？啊，对，刚才没有点击那个英语，所以说不好意思，就重新从头再做一遍。嗯，好，好，谢谢你啊。嗯，呃，大家晚上好，我叫艾玛杨。啊、uh, ，I'm Emma Yang, and、uh, good evening, everybody. 啊、uh, ，我住在 Dorchester。啊 ，I'm in Dorchester. 我想说，即使对于相同种族的学生来说，呃、uh, ，My point is even to the、uh, student from the same race， 因为就读学校和家庭邮政编码的不同 ，Based on their uh uh school or the zip code where they live in， 都会对录取的结果产生极大的影响。Those will both impact the uh admission result。我认为种族和邮政编码。可以成为你们 BPS 录取工作的一个参考因素。I think you, uh, BPS uh, admission process uh, could, uh, refer to the student race and zip code. 但是呢，不能作为绝对因素。But you cannot use this as an absolute, uh, uh, reference. 因为对于一些能够进入考试学校的学生来说 ，because to some of the students who has the potential to be admitted to the exam schools. 你们 BPS 录取了他们。呃、uh, ，if they get admitted to the uh the BPS exam schools， 到底是帮助了他们还是伤害了他们，都是不确定。呃、uh, ，we are not sure whether this would、uh, benefit them or this would、uh, harm them。我希望 BPS 尽量做到公平公正。I hope uh, BPS uh, uh, would be fair。呃，对每个学生的人生负责。To be responsible to every student's life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> that concludes all of our、um, <coughs> speaker that had signed up.、Um, I don't know, Miss Sullivan, if you wanted to ask the public. Yes, I, I think. You know, we have、um, a few more moments. Again, I, I think this is just an important part of of this process. So, if there, you know, I think that we could take、uh, two, maybe three more,、um, if if there's interest.、Um, 
So yeah. we have, uh -huh. sorry, I apologize. No, yeah, no. Lauren Thompson. Unmute. <clears throat> Hi, um, I, I don't have anything planned, um, but I, you know, really feel compelled to speak. I feel very passionate about this issue. Um, I am a graduate of Girls Latin School, so I have dated myself, uh, but that's okay. Uh, my sister is also a graduate. <clears throat> we were, uh, we both attended advanced work classes. So I go back, I believe to the, and at that time, um, there were advanced work classes at probably in every, at each elementary school, right? So I think we go back to the, either the first or second speaker who um, emphasized the need for the feeder schools to be adequately, to adequately prepare our students. So I think that is lacking. And when my son transitioned from a private school to a Boston public school, that's where some of, some of his deficiencies were noticed, right? He, he was thriving in a, in, a, in a private school. When he transitioned to a public school, the curriculum was totally different, didn't teach phonics where, as he had, had learned that. So um, I, I would really like to see the city put the money into the schools. I also served on the uh, school assignment task force under uh, Mayor Menino. So we, we spent a lot of time, you know, uh, looking at school quality. So this is an issue that we have been looking at for decades. But I, I must say that I do support the temporary policy because I, I have a nephew, right, who is in sixth grade, A's and B's, recommended by his teacher. Um, he lives in Hyde Park. We are just praying. I am praying that he gets into Boston Latin School. I drove him over there the other day. He is so, so excited. And the last thing I want to see for him is disappointment. The last comment I want to make is I don't quite understand with gentrification happening in our city, right? Especially Roxbury, Dorchester right now. It's happened already in other parts of our city. How can anyone tie race to a zip code now, nowadays? I think it's very difficult if someone says, yes, my zip code is 02119. Very difficult for anyone to say that that person is a person of color nowadays. So I strongly support, uh, uh, you know, putting money into our schools to better equip, not, uh, you know, taking away the advanced work classes because they work, because they work, they definitely work for students. And also uh, supporting the temporary policy in place for this coming school year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. I'm not sure if there's any more, one more, anyone else. Okay. Wonderful. Well, certainly we have, thank you, um, Ms. Parvek. So we have Saturday, um, again, um, 10 a.m. Uh, we're starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday. I believe the notice, the notice has been posted. Um, and again, it's really important that we hear um, from, you know, the city of Boston, um, you know, about, again, and our focus as a task force is on, you know, the policy to be potentially. And so really wanting to hear from, um, our fellow residents about, um, you know, your thoughts as it relates to that, your suggestions, um, your recommendations, um, that you may have that that could help to inform our work um, that we um, have been charged to do. So I, I you know want to thank all who who spoke this evening um, for our first listening session, um, and again look forward to hearing from folks on Saturday. Um, Mr. Contempasas. You're on mute. 
No, I think you covered it well. Uh, I just want to echo we're we're uh, very much interested in listening to folks throughout the city, and this is an opportunity, not only during the weekly meetings, but also on this coming Saturday to begin that process. So in terms of um, next steps, um, again, we'll, we'll, we are meeting on this coming Saturday, and then our following, uh, the meeting after that will be next Tuesday, the 16th um, at 5 p.m. We look forward to seeing um, folks there. Um, before we close out, just want to go around um, to the members of the task force um, to see if any of you have anything that you'd like to add. I just wanted to add my thanks to those who testified and also my thanks to those who provided interpretation. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Garrett? Um, echoing those thanks from Mr. Kreger and also just wanted to recognize the two student groups at BLS that were mentioned by the Josiah Quincy student who's receiving um, free one-to-one -one tutoring, a helping elbow and, Do and Dosimus. Um, both of those programs have really kind of gotten underway during the pandemic, and it's been really inspiring to see our students taking on service efforts in a virtual space. Um, so it's really wonderful to meet a young person who's benefiting from that. So um, thank you for that. That was wonderful. Yes, indeed. Uh, Mr. Acevedo, you, you look like you have a comment. No, no I just, I... <laughs> This, this is the first night I've been able to figure out how to get the English channel to work. It was a it was a costly interlude, but I'm most grateful for it. Thank you, Madam Chair, for handling that so well. <laughs> no problem. Any other task force members? I have a yes. quick question. If we have some recommendations for places we would think as a task force we should look into to hear more about how other uh, cities are doing this, when is the right time to do that? Now, um, yeah. if you, yeah, if you could send, um, <laughs> if you could send us notes, um, or if you'd like to share, um, you know, uh, you know, particular, um, jurisdictions, um, please let us know as soon as possible, because we want to line those up. Sure. There is an exam high school in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm -hmm. that over the last six or seven years has changed their admissions policy and significantly diversified their school. And on U.S. World News, I hate to say it, Miss Carrot, they are ranked higher than you. <laughs> Not that that's like the end all be all, but I know that is, you know, that is something. Um, and, you know, every city's different, but I think hearing all the different cities, we could probably potentially come up with the best idea possible. Yeah, I love it. Yes. Um, Miss Tung? And there are um, two documentaries that are out, one about New York City um, selective high school admissions process and one about San Francisco. Uh, the New York City one is called Test and the San Francisco one is called Try Harder. And um, I can't get them. <laughs> so if there's a way that we can get like a special task force link, <laughs> um, it would be probably informative. Excellent, thank you. Any other, I, it's hard in the virtual, it, when we're in the same room, it's easier sometimes to have these uh, comments, but certainly don't wanna lose that um, in the virtual space. Anyone else wanna add before we, uh, I guess I'm looking at my, my notes that Ms. Parvex provided to us. Um, if, all right, well, if there is nothing further, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I so move. Thank you, Mr. Acevedo. Is there a second? A second. second. Thank you, Ms. Tong. Is there any, any discussion, any further discussion, although that's not a debatable motion, but um, all right, with that, Ms. Parvex, Will you please call the roll? Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. Mr. Acevedo? Aye. Ms. Aguirre? Aye. Mr. Kreger? Aye. Dr. Freeman Wisdom?
Did I? Oh, okay. Miss Grassa? I'm sorry, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> this, that you want to return. Do you, oh, would you like to? Yes, yes. Miss Lam? Miss Nagasawa? Did I hear Miss Nagasawa? I... Is she here? I think she just dropped off. I think she had to drop off. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, Miss Garrett? Yes. Uh, Miss Tang? Aye. Miss White? Aye. Miss Sullivan? Aye. And Mr. Condon Pass? Aye. That it's unanimous. Wonderful. Again, thank you, everyone. Um, our meeting is adjourned. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Good night.